Good evening. How do you become favourites of a competition you haven't even entered? Get knocked out of the Champions League, of course. That's what happened to Liverpool. But they quite like the UEFA Cup. Remember two years ago? Well, if Liverpool are to repeat their triumph of 2001, they've got to get past tonight's opponents, Vitesse Arnhem. And the first leg is in Holland here with us, just as unbiased, no doubt, as they were two years ago. Alan Hansen <coughs> and Mark Lawrence. And, well, it's not really where Liverpool want to be, but they did enjoy it two years ago, as did you, getting very good. Yeah, <laughs> totally uh, neutral, as you'd expect. <laughs> uh, but you look back in the performances in the UEFA Cup two years ago, and you look at the great performances away from home, Roma, Barcelona, where you know they went there and they were solid and they played as a team. Michael Owen got the goals in Rome, and they need a performance like that tonight. I'm not so sure this would be in the top of Willie's priorities this match in this competition, but they've got a little bit of blip in form. They've struggled the last four matches. They're not playing well mm. going forward. They're struggling defensively. Honcho <coughs> comes back tonight and he's a tremendous influence on them. I just think that. When you talk about confidence, the only way you can get confidence is in the football pitch. You oh, can't winning. get the yeah, but yeah. winning training pitch. Yeah. What you would want tonight, you'd have, you you really want a clean sheet, solid yeah. performance, and two or three goals at the other end. But that's in a perfect yeah. world. Well, Liverpool want to get out of a rut, Mark, because yeah, you know, well, that, end of sequence, and you're off on a new one, aren't you? Absolutely, big game at home against Manchester United in the Premier League on Sunday. I think you know, as Alan rightly says. He, Wherever you end it is fantastic and it doesn't matter who you're playing against. It doesn't matter that it's the UEFA Cup. Um, it's all about the performance. Then obviously it's all about the results. Mm -hmm. And I think because they've had that taste two years ago, while of course you're, ex of course you're disappointed to be out of the Champions League, you're bound to be. But uh, this now becomes a big game for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, certainly with, as far as Julier is concerned, they've worried long and hard about the team, gave it great thought as well, with an eye obviously on the match on Sunday. And yet the team that he, that he selected, uh, would arguably be one of his stronger teams anyway, yeah. which tells you exactly yeah, is, what he's yeah. thinking. Yeah, tells you exactly what he's thinking. But I think he's playing a strong side because there's no point in playing a weakened side here and winning the match and then going in against Manchester United because obviously he'll play a strong side against Manchester United. For that confidence factor, yeah. you've got to play the vast majority of the players that are going to play on Sunday. Which he's done. Uh, which yeah. he's done. I mean, there was a big concern about the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper had a bad World Cup do deck. He's come in this season, I think he's been magnificent up to about four matches ago, yeah. and then he's made three mistakes in four <laughs> matches. He's shown a bit of loyalty towards him, and that's well, sometimes but important. That, isn't but it? the other thing about that, though, is I mean, if, if you played Kirkland tonight, uh, what would he have done? Would he mm. have gone into Sunday's game playing Kirkland? We just, you know, yeah. that's a, you know, an even bigger game. I think also, as well, if you make too many changes, you're asking too much of the players to be able to straight away to gel together. And then again, if you, if you make wholesale changes yeah. tonight, and then you go to Manchester United mm. on Sunday, you're going to have to change yeah. it. The only problem you've yeah. got with the goalkeeper is that you can get away with it if your centre forward loses the confidence. Mistake. Or, you know, the midfield quartet, yeah. or even the centre backs. If your goalkeeper's under pressure, then it goes spread right <laughs> through the team yeah. because you think he's going to make a mistake. It doesn't matter if you get one or two, you always think, hey, this guy's struggling, he's going to make a mistake. So it's a massive game for Dudek yeah. tonight. Okay. Right, let's hear from the um, Liverpool manager. Gerard Ullier has been talking to Garth Crooks. Gerald, is there any sense that you may approach the UEFA Cup differently than you approach the Champions League? No. Uh, we want to do well. Uh, we know it's European competition. We did extremely well two seasons ago and it'd be history if we win it again. So we get into this competition to try in order to give our best and uh, maybe to try to, to win it. Last season, your defensive records were outstanding. This year, not so good. Um, does it give you any cause for concern, though? Well, it, it's not been very good for, for the last two or three games, but before that, it was all right. So there's no reason why it shouldn't be back to normal. Is the result against Vitez um, more important than the performance itself? It is, it is. Because when you're going through a difficult period, results are the only thing that can bring the confidence back. Don't get me wrong, I mean, the confidence has not gone, but uh, because we, we had some good spell, even against Fulham, and uh, I don't think we deserved uh, to draw with uh, uh, Sunderland. We should have gone better than that. I mean, the, 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 the match facts will tell you, but at the same time, it happens sometimes in football. So we, uh, I would say a good result, despite the, whatever the performance uh, would please us. Stephen Gerrard seems to be making a very sterling effort to get his form back on track. Would that be a fair assessment? He had, a, I would say, a very good half against Fulham. But the, the more important that it seems that his fitness is back and also his, uh, his commitment seems to be uh, uh, extremely good 
Uh, every player, particularly when you're young, is due to go through a difficult period. And we missed, I insist that we missed a good Steven Gerrard. And, um, but it seems that, uh, from what I've seen in training lately, that he's back to his normal. Gerard, his fitness is back. I mean, it was only mm. 10 days ago he got that back, but um, <laughs> I, I think what he's way. saying is the kick up the backside he thinks may have worked. Do you think that was a justified public kick up the backside? Well, he hasn't been playing that well. I think the biggest job that manager's got, forget about the coaching, is to get the best out of his players. Now, he's got to decide how he gets the best out of his players. <laughs> Whether it's a f game, you always go back to the confidence factor. You've got to play him in the middle. And I, think, tonight. I think obviously he's heeded the warning, Stephen Gerrard, that he's had from the manager because it sounds as though he's knuckled down, he's got on with the training. They're saying he's a lot sharper. They said he'd played particularly well in the second half at, uh, at Fulham at the weekend. You know, he's, he's too good a player and, yeah. to be left out of the side. If you, if you, if you pick the strongest Liverpool 11, he's always going to be, be in it. And, and he's one of those players, basically, mm. um, who's in a fantastic position because he can be what he wants yeah. to be. He's, he's got so much raw ability. He just, he's obviously had the reminder, which is, hey, you're a footballer, yeah. you're not a playboy. I think there's too much hype about him. That's why I think he's mediocre. Well, you're yeah. mainly Well, exactly. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, the one to blame. He's, he's been listening to me on television and reading me in the papers, so... No, he's um, not. He's no not. but there hasn't been a, a kid yet at 22 that hasn't had a brick wall at some stage. Yeah. It's how you react to the, the roller can you get, and he's reacted well. Yeah. He'll play well tonight. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Vitesse on him. Know a lot about them? Loads. What do you want to know? I don't know. <laughs> let's find what out. What country is it from? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's join our commentary team for the first leg of this third round at UEFA Cup tights. Vitesse Arnhem versus Liverpool, and it's Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. different venue. The Herodome has a movable pitch which has been brought in from the outside and the retractable roof is closed so it gives us a match played inside. It's been raining in Arnhem this afternoon. It may still well be raining now but we wouldn't know because we're cosy in here but the atmosphere presumably will get quite warm and people tell me it gets very smoky too which is something uh, opposition players would not be as used to as the home players. We shall see. The usual handshakes as Ongsho just went through there. It's missed 10 games. The uh, youngsters who formed the sort of guard of honour being applauded off by their seniors. Um, this is the Vitesse team. On paper, modest opposition compared with the teams Liverpool were hoping to be facing. Scoring goals has been a problem for them, but uh, the approach work has been good. Chances have not been taken. That's the story. Stefanovic will uh, strike a chord for Sheffield Wednesday fans. The front two, Mamba and Amoa, a Cameroon and a Ghanaian partnership, is pretty quick. And they're hoping that they can start well to uh, test Sami Hepia and his uh, now return regular partner, Stefan Onsho. Liverpool, four changes from the starting lineup uh, of the weekend. Gerard and Barros were substitutes then. Ancho and Bruno Cheru, the Frenchman who came to them from Lille, come in. Michael Owen, incidentally, starts a match for the fifth consecutive time. And that doesn't happen too often in the reign of uh, Gerard Oudier. But uh, the man sitting alongside me is at football matches very often. Awesome. That's his second or third this week, Trevor Brookie. Well, it's uh, one of those games now, Liverpool uh, doing their bonded session just before kick-off. Certainly, I think the lads mentioned Dudek, an important game. Honcho back in. Babel, interested to see how his fitness level's coming along. Uh, good to see him back. And Gerard, of course, in form-wise. So, Mahuito Gonzalez. Well, we'd be happy if it uh, got underway. And it does. Maybe... Uh, Liverpool and their supporters should remind themselves that their first success in the European Champions League back in 1977 was on the back of two successes in the UEFA Cup in four years. And uh, in a wider context, this is perhaps quite a good place to keep uh, life and uh, the business of sport in context. One of the uh, other Dutchmen and Elisa, who started this attack. This is Mamba. It's an 
Bernardo the Dutchman and a promising young player too. Put back by breaking his uh, leg a year ago. Theo Janssen, the number 10 there. Zeman at the back, 26, renewing acquaintances with Michael Owen. They met in the International in Bratislava. So you'll work out from that that uh, Zeman is a Slovakian. Goalkeeper is Yugoslav, Jibric. And here's uh, Cornelis. Over to Frankel, who's the player born in Suriname. Here he is again. And it's already quite warm in here compared with the temperature outside. Given away to the Belgian, Klassens. Good challenge by Anshu, and he'd be happy to get the first challenge in. Well, played 45 minutes in the reserves against West Bromwich Albion on Monday. Yesterday the evening, uh, Gerard Houllier said that he was close, and in the end, he was close enough to play. Moa, a bit slow to see the opportunity there. Zeman. Connelisa. Mustafa. One of the youngsters in the side, Mustafa. Frankel. Second channel is not as good as the first from Oncho. And he's invited by the Spanish referee to calm down a little bit. Timing not great, Trevor. That was a wild lunge, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, just fractionally out. Just on the, the shape of, of Liverpool. It looks as like if they sort of is a sort of uh, reverted to a little diamond type shape in, in the midfield. Uh, Gerard on the right uh, and Murphy on the left. Sheiru just behind the front two and Zhao doing the sort of anchorman's role. Janssen going for the cross. Which in a way is a bit surprising. An early shot from distance against Dudek who's been having a few problems with that sort of shot. Might have been worth trying. The uh, coach. Tessa, Mike Snowy, came up from the youth team, the reserve team, took over from Ronald Koeman, and he went off to uh, coach Ajax. Side were a bit fortunate yesterday. Nine here is Emil Lambert, Cameroon. Hasn't scored in the league, but scored in the UEFA Cup against Werder Bremen. Chenko starting that move, he's from Ukraine, really are United Nations, this is a useful run. But in the end he couldn't get the cross in. Cornelisa. It's unlucky, Cornelisa looked as if he'd got away. Uh, I think we've got to give Murphy credit, he tracked back and just gave him a little nudge, lent on him. And uh, just didn't allow him to get the cross in from the byline. But uh, important Liverpool just get to uh, you know, weather the early storm that you usually get from home teams. Clearances and Dudek should tell you the substitutes for Liverpool Smitsa, Heskey, Hans Juf, Chris Kirkland, who still waits his chance in goal, Jamie Carragher, Igor Bischan, and uh, young John Welsh to play for the England uh, under 19 side is a, a spiky midfield player. Victoria shooting practice yesterday evening. Gerard has pushed forward on the right. Murphy to take the free kick. This is Cheru, Zeman's head. Here's Gerard running out of space. Quite an important pairing, really. Uh, the number three, uh, Stefanovic, the captain, and also number 26, Zeman, who should know quite a bit about Michael Owen, what was Slovakian and uh, the game they played. He played quite well that night. and. Uh, so, uh, as I say, that pair is pretty experienced. Um, definitely, I think then they rely a little bit on Levchenko, the Ukrainian in the centre of midfield, and then Klassen, who we've seen, the Belgian, who plays wide on this left-hand side against Babel, just heading it in. Oh, by Frankel. Also, and, uh, he was obstructed by uh, Amoa. Frankel. 
Bamba. Thank you. Good guy in the running. Man Bamba. This is he. Take that. Uh, it's the right idea, but not the accuracy. There was a gap on the left. Owen chased it, but was never going to make it. I was a little bit anxious. I mean, there have been a couple of opportunities, just that a little bit of composure. Dan Murphy's usually good breaking like that. There was plenty of space to knock it into. Just a bit tense, overhit it. Two people might be surprised that uh, Danny Murphy's playing this evening, and he's been. Such a player against Manchester United, he would probably be the first name on the sheet for Sunday. The record has been so good. Not cut out by the captain, Stefanovic. And Liverpool at the moment are playing ten men. Cheru, who's sitting it out on the far side. Nobody's rushing around, yes they are now. See what the problem is. Doesn't look very happy, does he? Uh, throwing his shin pads off, which is never a good sign. Movement already on the bench, so it rather looks as though the Frenchman who hasn't had too many chances. Might have made only a brief appearance here. Yeah, the signal's just gone over. Uh, I think they want the stretcher and the signal there right the other side of the pitch to get somebody warmed up, so that is a great shame for him. Frankel, Mbamba, Mustafa. Took rather too long. This is out to uh, Traore. Move from the central position to the wide position in the back four this evening. Mustafa again. Frankel. Oh, what a disappointing finish. Both uh, from the point of view of the team move and the quality of the shot, which came off the outside of the boot. But there wasn't much movement for him. Well, you can see the way he's just probing it. He's obviously pulled a muscle of some sort in the front there, and uh, that's where it goes. It looks high up, even in the, uh, the groin area. Here's Vladimir Smitsa. He's one of Liverpool's better players in uh, Basel when it all went wrong, particularly in the first half, and the defence was unbelievably square. And uh, you don't agree with that assessment, ask Mr. Brooking, he was there. Now, he played very well second half. Uh, just uh, ran out of time, didn't they, as such? But he's just slotted in uh, behind the front two into that little area of the front of the diamond. Here he is. Nicely spread out. Gerard's got support on his outside from Babel. Goes for the cross instead, which is very well claimed by Dragoslav Jevric. Made his debut for Yugoslavia back in February of this year. It's Mustafa. Trying to run Traore. Topia. Smitsa. Advantage play by the referee. Babel. Nobody to seize on the efforts of uh, Marcus Babel. Good to see him back into the side. It's his sixth appearance. But sad to see the Frenchman Cheru being carried off. Oh, what a calm piece of play by Herpia. Rush to make a challenge. Notice one or two of the Liverpool players slipping as the ball is being knocked into him. But sometimes when you indoors, the temptation is to play with a rubber moulded boot. But uh, looks like one or two might have uh, made the wrong selection early on. Flick he wanted, Mbamba. 
Ong Shu. Smita. Barosh, just offside. A bit unlucky, just to try to get on the shoulder. Look, you can see him in the middle there, is it, when the ball's played? Very tight. Uh, just gets in the middle of the two central defenders, unlucky. They've been leaning forward slightly, but probably got away with that. Out of 27,000. Uh, Staffer again looking for the return. 21 year old Ghanaian. That's a good challenge by Jao. Senegal. As Alan was saying, he's done well, and I've seen him for Liverpool. Strong and powerful uh, alongside Haman. That's been a pretty formidable pairing together. Unlucky. Mamba. Fortunately for Liverpool, he slipped. I'm trying to test Traore. Owen, very deep. It's not quite the pass he intended, but it's landing on the head of Ongshu. Can't even say it got caught in the wind, can we, inside the stadium here? Lessons, the old man of the party at 30. Zeman, Slovak is uh, 28. Came back in the international against England. He'd been out of the uh, international scene for uh, three years. His 25th cap then. Smitsa Herpia. Quick kick. Murphy caught. By, uh, Tim Connolisa. It's definitely a different atmosphere, a match played indoors. They like it that way, here. Are in. Corner. Good defending, Connolly's uh, right back. Right loan, I thought, just got past him. Perhaps could have taken a chance and tried to cross it with his left foot. Tempted to come back inside on the right and enabled the challenge to be made. Murphy to take the corner. Aaron in the six-yard box, four to come from further back. Murphy can try for an improvement put out by uh, Classens. Pepia <laughs> up in the box as well. Another clean header by Barosh. What? Four ball. Jao. rather looking for it rather than uh, anticipating it would go there yes yeah, Stavanovic I think uh, read it uh, very much a left-footed player and uh, some man playing on the, the right hand side as I say uh, got to keep a close eye on Barris and oh, and then also be conscious of Schmeitz so that changed their shape a little bit because uh, they were worried about you know Schmeitz had just been tucked behind the front too so they've just brought uh, you know, Jensen back to, to keep an eye on him Staffa. Janssen. Slight knock on the ankle. Mike just lost his boot. Stefanovic. Mamba. Might have been better that, to let that run wide. Take by Zeman, but no danger. They've got three young strikers they have, uh, Bamba and then Amoa, and out wide Mustafa. They, you know, got a lot of uh, energy and, and pace, but sometimes just technically they just once or twice get overexcited and uh, give it away, but a uh, good experience for them playing against a side like Liverpool this evening. Mustafa is 21. 
Samoa 22, only last month, and uh, Bamba 20 and from Cameroon. Given away to Spitzer. Baroche are in thinking about going. Baroche didn't make up his mind quickly enough. That's more the determination that both manager and Liverpool supporter wants to see. Not to mention England supporter from this man, Stephen Gerrard. Well, it was really weird watching uh, the Basel game because he never made any of those sort of change, ch uh, challenges that he's famous for. I was pleased to see him get up there because he went through two or three, uh, took the heavy knock. Now, this is a very good position. Uh, just in case Danny Murphy, I think, will be the one to take it. I think he's made that decision for the team. And his record suggests fair enough. Five goals to his credit so far this season. Leverage well off his line. Got a big wall, almost dead centre. The wall did its job. There wasn't anybody having to move. Offside, Harry. That was late, wasn't it, the flag? <laughs> that was a slow motion replay from the linesman there. Look at him, the ball's not forward. Definitely, they're offside. But it uh, doesn't go up until the ball almost bounces, so I think the home fans are going to get concerned for a moment. away with that a bit Barosh again lovely turn that caught Stefanovic opportunities here two to the right ball a bit short play back by Smitsa Gerard still two to cross Frankel who made the first block Smitsa a turn he didn't really want Plassens Stefanovic who was beaten initially finally gets away a sort of clearance from him. The suggestion is that Stefanovic is uh, a rather better player than uh, he's probably considered to be at Sheffield Wednesday. Gerard uh, looks as though he's run off that knock. Useful wall and good backtracking by Traore. Stefanovic was under pressure from Ronald Koeman when he was the uh, coach here. He'd rather given up on him, but he came back to a lot of early season training. This is a couple of years ago. And convinced Koeman, Ronald Koeman, to the uh, extent that Koeman is now trying to get him to move from Vitesse to Ajax. It was the uh, window in January. And Vitesse, a club in need of money, had to sell four players in the summer, including the international winger Sikora. Now have an opportunity here, Stefanovic is one of those forward. It's well claimed. Didn't really give anybody any chance of getting ahead on it, though. We've got a good left foot, Jensen. Uh, good pace. Fortunately, it was just too much near the near post. Uh, catch by Dudek, he needed to get one or two of those, but certainly if you can get that pace nearer across the face of the six-yard box, that would be a difficult one to deal with. Babel. Scored in the match, Dortmund. Janssen. Mustafa. All right. There's that little panic button from a mower there. Uh, Most of us done quite well. It's quite a good little contest for he, to him down the right-hand side. He and left-back Traore. Uh, just a mower and um, Bamba, as such, haven't linked up as well with him. Mustafa has a nickname, Rigo, which he used to have on his shirt. But his form has been such that the coach says 
you're going to be called Mustafa again until you prove to me you're worth having your nickname on your shirt. Only the great players can do that. Klassens, promising. And that may well be a booking against Jao. It is indeed. Because it was a real opportunity there if he could have played the ball left. And Jao made sure that the Belgian couldn't get his... Oh, did he? Bit of a jump, but he did make a half challenge. I think it was initially a little tug back, but as you say, it's sort of like delayed action, wasn't it? And having got away as a midfield player, you think to yourself, well, let me go at the back four, but the, whether he just decided, oh, let's go down and make the most of it, but it's too far out for any shooting opportunity, so it seemed a bit of a waste of a good uh, chance for him having got the wrong side of jam. Must have hurt himself a bit with his, uh, his trionics. Belgian action with that. Be Janssen again on the left foot, Stefanovic being invited to go forward. 31 year old Dutchman. And he might get him in here. Covering by Gerard, in spite of being fouled by Stefanovic. Yeah, a little tactic uh, there to decide to go late, hoping nobody picks you up, but Gerard uh, pretty alert and came from wide and made sure he made the challenge, they tried to look for Slavanovic over the back post and not back across the goal. What do you think of it so far? Amusing to hear Gerard Hullier saying that European matches are always tight. When he was talking to an audience about the UEFA Cup match, bearing in mind the last time his team played in the UEFA Cup. On show, going over the top, but a back was made for him by Bamba. But you could argue the game against uh, Basel was hardly tight. That challenge brought the uh, assistant manager to his feet. Levchenko from Ukraine, number 15. Gerard, Mustafa, saw it early. Hang on the far side, showing the uh, five trophies won in a about a season by Liverpool. Past the halfway point of the first half. Tanovic's header for Vitesse Arnhem in 11th place in the Dutch League out of 18. in sort of the more experienced Bob Peters who reported sick yesterday but is included amongst the Vitesse substitutes I would have thought the experience of Peters and uh, extra physical strength and power might be uh, exercised perhaps in the last half an hour just seeing how the, the younger players do in the meantime Owen Zeman trying to push him wide. Good contest. Another corner. Liverpool's third as we come up to the end of the uh, 25th minute. Useful punch down to Gerrard. But he has been known to do a lot better than that. Did well, the keeper committed himself, Jevrick, and uh, threw a lot of bodies, got his fist to it, got pretty good distance, and so it made it difficult for Gerard to hit it. No clear-cut openings for either goalkeeper to actually make a, a save, so it's been a, a steady opening. I think Liverpool will probably have the slight edge when they're going forward, that little bit of experience and movement, but they're not created any clear-cut opening, as we say. Level four, a two of Vitesse. Good game of head tennis. Stefanovic. Frankel. Makes it was caught a little bit there. Barosh. Gets Owen in. 
and Liverpool lead. And the ball given away by Vitesse and Liverpool taking full advantage. Barash did well and Owen with the man of ball. Supplies the finish. You know, lose here, Frankl, you know, Schmeitzer comes in, is knocked out early to Gerard. Good early ball into Barros, who holds it up, is very aware, just coming inside in there is Michael Owen, who's no doubt given him a, a shout, not picked up well by Semen, really who gets drawn into Barros. The two of the central defenders are then at the same man, and although he sees it, corner leads the right back, can't get it there, and Michael Owen picks his spot neatly into the corner. Simple goal. 13th of the current season. Mustafa. One goal was enough to beat uh, Vitesse on Saturday, away at uh, Enschede against FC 20. There's young left back Frankel who, who dropped him in trouble, didn't he, by overhitting the ball as he tried to carry it out. Smitsa. And Frankel making an error again. Not yet as crucial. Murphy. match for both sides but uh, the two previous rounds of the competition have been played by Vitesse and they've been pretty resilient they beat uh, Rafi Bucharest here only 1-0 and got a draw away in Bucharest and then they played Werder Bremen one here 2-1 and they were two goals behind and had a man sent off in the away leg but got back to a 3 all draw with 10 men and went through. It's on show. The babble. Murphy, the nearest man to her in. He gets round corner Lisa, and here's Murphy. Should have been two. That was great for her to play, wasn't it? Gerard spreading Mike Lowen a little bit wide. Doesn't look as if there's anything on here. He just <laughs> knocks it round one way. His speed takes him the other, and that was a good opportunity. I don't know if he's just leaning back, getting underneath it. But uh, just a torrid five or six minutes now for the home side. It was a good result against Werder Bremen, but uh, certainly now, of course, as well, that goal would, unlike the Champions League, where you're in a league basis, uh, suddenly home and away. The, the away goal is that much more crucial than Liverpool have got one. They might get another here, this is Barosh, Owen's calling for it, Barosh has made a mess of it. And uh, Barosh actually realising he'd lost control, stretched too much and caught uh, the Slovakian Zeman. Just caught him with Zeman and went across him to be fair. Yeah, Barosh trying to be unselfish again, actually looked up and thought, well, shall I play Michael Owen in and then just took his eye off it and when he went back to knock it forward over hit it and allowed Zeman to come in and make the interception but again it looked like two against one not too much doubt that Liverpool offer rather greater quality than has been met so far it's justified by the fact that they qualify for the Champions League and they obviously will feel they still should have been there Something they have to put out of their minds. Got a few problems for this gentleman, Mike Snowy. 39 at the beginning of next month. Frankel. Side flag. Bamba sort of the more forward of the attacking two. Uh, 
And then you have a Moa sort of plays half and half 21, drop, tries to drop it a bit deep, but uh, at the moment they're, they're not really getting the made a quality ball forward to them, and they're not got quite the strength and, and the holding up ability. Then, uh, really, Hoopier and Poncho just giving little toe enders and nicking the ball off. Picking up the word. Uh, so going a long way as far as the hand card are concerned. Picking up your word, strength. He talks about Owen speed, but his strength on the ball is a major factor, isn't it? Yeah, he's got that wiriness and his body strength, hasn't he, now? Uh, certainly not easy to knock over. Stefanovic, Smitzer, puts it straight back. This is Murphy! Oh, he's unlucky this time. Stefanovic waited for his goalkeeper to come. Both left it, and... Uh, Murphy was a little unfortunate to see it finish up on the roof of the net. Well, it was always going to clear Stevanovic, and he sort of subconsciously thought the keeper must be coming for that, but Jevrich actually started to come and then stopped, and then it was in no man's land. And fortunately, Danny Murphy, just sensing his, his halfway out stranded, just tried to cushion headed it over the top of him, but it was just a little bit too hard and cleared the goal as well. Lastens, Herpia. And a good example of the combination between Herpia and Osho. His absence has certainly affected Liverpool. The manager was pains to say that Traore has played well there, but they do have an understanding, the uh, Swiss and the Finn, the centre of the defence. Managing only one clean sheet in the Champions League matches. That's a corner. Part of the claim by Traore. That's been the sort of little glimmer of a, a possible opening down that right hand side with Mustafa, and, and just on a couple of occasions, Cornelius, the right back, just overlapping with him. Moore's gone on the line, four behind him. Herpia's header. And a missed strike by the Ukrainian. Levchenko hasn't really been a factor yet. Uh, he's a bit more their sort of attacking midfielder because they've, they've drawn Janssen back, uh, number 10, just to be close around Schmitzer. But uh, it means, you know, they've almost reverted to the diamond shape. Mr. is playing quite widish on the right, but there's not a lot of width in either side. And uh, at the present, uh, through the middle, Owen and Barros are a much better option holding the ball up and, and pulling their defence apart as opposed to a, a Moran and Mbemba. Pushed up to the edge of the centre circle. Christopher out on the right. Mbemba down the middle. Now coming slightly left. And fouling Babel. quite the power to hold the ball up nor have they got the power really to to challenge for those high balls either Gerard was caught there and that will be a booking for Frankel and a worry for the backroom staff at Liverpool I think he just knocks it off and rides the tackle and uh, does one of the rolls I don't I think it was quite as bad as perhaps it looked to be Frank. Frank Hill as well. Stefanovic. Better touch. It'd be difficult to describe any pass made forward in the uh, Liverpool half of the field by Vitessa as incisive. No, it's an optimistic, uh, you're looking for a, a Liverpool defender to have a lapse of concentration or miscontrol it. At the moment, uh, it's looked very comfortable and, uh, you know, the manager's looking a bit frustrated, but uh, it's just the, that little bit of technical quality, I think, more than anything. 
think he should be quite happy to decide he's only one down. Could not have been three. Amoa. Gerard. Bubble on the move. Everything now left of him. Frankel with the challenge of sorts. Murphy. Passes. Stefanovic. Janssen. Uh, Lechenko. Penelisa. Bit of room here for Mustafa. Not a good ball. Stayed in. And it appeared not to understand the coming. You said earlier in the intro that they've had their money troubles. You know, they do a rely now very much on their academy, bringing you know, the younger players. I mean, they picked up those three sort of striker attacking players. Uh, they all come through their academy, as has Jansen. They've got three more sitting on the bench all around the 19, 20, 21 age. So it, it's asking them a lot to make that transition. And, uh, you know, being in European football is, is part of you know, their development, but of course, you know, with, with their financial troubles, they also are looking to try and get one or two of their players, as they did last summer, to, to get bought by one or two of the bigger clubs. But the transfer market, or that route, has uh, been devalued a little bit with all the financial problems all countries are suffering. You sound a bit like Gordon Brown. <laughs> yes, Mr. Prudence. Now, oh, can the left foot of Janssen sort out something here for the home side? Possibilities have up the volume. A bit more pace on that, but again, rather short. Gets the corner. Pointed by Gerard. Been involved quite a lot. Which is good to see. Semen coming first. Oh, and Stefanovic. Had an opportunity. Owen. It's going to be a long run, and Jevic is going to get there first. It's good to see Stephen Gerrard making those sort of runs. He just didn't have the energy level in Basel a couple of weeks ago to, or, or the enthusiasm to, to be able to get involved like that. So he, he is certainly much more involved. But they had a little bit of a break, didn't they, when Stefanovic went up? It could have dropped anyway. He didn't know it was behind him, and then Jao managed to hook it away. Another foul by Franco, who is glared at by the referee. <laughs> I think that's in any coaching book. I heard of swapping shirts, but not shorts. The elastic survived the test. Gerard. Janssen. Ball from Janssen, it was just not forward again with optimism but not belief. Dudek hasn't had much to do. Dudek came, of course, from football in Holland from Feyenoord, signed on the same day as Chris Kirkland about four hours afterwards. Kirkland. I believe actually costs slightly more money. A little bit for the understudy with uh, pretensions of being an international player, has done well at under 21. Smitsa. There was a story that Fire Lord had a problem with the transfer. And it may be that action was taken just in case. It was on the deadline day, 31st. Having available for uh, European. It's, uh, last season, of course, when I think it's fair to say, Trevor, that Dudek, probably along with Shea Given, was as good as goalkeeper as there was in the Premiership. Well, yeah, well, yeah, he's been superb, and I think Alan is only probably the last three or four games where he's just uh, lost that little bit of confidence. But it must be frustrating for Kirkland because at some stage, if he's going to fulfil his potential, he needs to get running a, a team and. It's a long wait sitting on the bench for a goalkeeper. Barosh. 
hunting in a pack of four but a bit close to each other Murphy Ah, oh, well played Gerard. it's on the left he's gonna have a crack but again looks more confident than they coming inside they should have done better with a little quartet that was uh, surging through the middle then it's just broken down he's quite a long way out there uh, never quite troubling the keeper The referee wants to check that uh, Stephen Gerrard is okay. It's that giant Jow who clattered him from behind. He came across and uh, rose above Stephen Gerrard and uh, but it does play. Meets her. One way of trapping the ball. Did well to recover. Onside is the verdict. Stefanovic was there very quickly. Smitsa. Now Janssen. No width. Absolutely no width. Now finally Mustafa. Three down the middle. Mbamba. A rare joy against Herpia. Janssen a little bit slow with Jao around. Frankel. Needs a good cross. And we've seen so far as a pretty dance. Levchenko. Man coming into the back is Mustafa. Second opportunity for Vitesa, one fell for Stefanovic from a corner and that was a good chance and Mustafa really should have got something on target I think he might have got caught in two minds whether to actually shoot himself good ball from Levchenko, they've just gone to sleep there, goes over Triori Murphy just thought Triori was going to deal with it, must have heard it was almost a cross wasn't it but nobody running in Bonalisa. Better spell this from Vitesse. Zeman. Into the last minute of the 45. Belongs to Dudek. He wasn't expecting a little nod though from Herpia. Could have been costly. He didn't know anything about that, did he? It just hit him on the back. He thought he was going over his head. Up here. Gerard. Stefanovic. Oof. Caught by Amoa. It was Hepia. That is nasty. It was about chest high. Hubia coming down and he's just right got the studs. It was an accident. Amoa's upset. Oh, he's been shown the yellow card, which I think is a, an error from the uh, Spanish referee. It was dangerous. I suppose the referee. We only saw it once and we're looking at it now for the third time, but I don't think there was any intent, it was an exuberance really. But you can see he's quite clearly apologising. Sometimes when you see incidents like that you don't know what the, what the uh, offender is saying, but there's no doubt in my mind that that was an apology. the referee will adjust the added time it's not as bad as it might have been for Sami Herpia
Just wonder, uh, Hubia waiting for the signal to come back on, whether Gerald Hubia will uh, sort of play Michael Owen for, you know, that much longer in the second half. Might give he and Heskey 45 minutes each. Owen, who looked particularly sharp, I thought, this evening, but uh, may well uh, come off, I would have thought, early before the final whistle. Of that whistle, there's the half-time whistle. And it's a familiar scoreline in terms of the score. Liverpool lead by one goal to nil. And the score on Michael Owen. And really, Trevor, it hasn't been too difficult, has it? No, I think it's been a bit more comfortable than I even thought it would be. I thought they played uh, very well. Uh, the tests have been a little bit raw in attacking areas and, uh, and a little bit uh, narrow, certainly at the back. Uh, not really uh, that confident, and I thought Owen took the chance comfortably. Yeah, Trevor summed it up. Comfortable for mm. Liverpool, they mm. dominated. Certainly most not of a it. classic. It's a spectacle. It's a nothing match. Um, Liverpool away from home. The UEFA Cup one 0 up. I cannot tell you how they played. I don't know if they've been good, bad, and different. I think that Vitesse are so bad it's untrue. And the worrying thing for Vitesse is they know they're a bad side. They're playing as though. We talk about confidence at the start of the match. I mean, isn't it the best league in the world, the Dutch league? But yeah. usually they can play. This lot can't play. And even the urgency, we'll talk about urgency in the middle of the park, there up front. Any. There wasn't any at all. So it's been a stroll, basically. Yeah. Well, it's well, the, the, the rest of the game now is as difficult for Liverpool as, as they want it to make it for themselves. Yeah. You know, if, if they can score another one in the first 15 minutes of the second half. So leg will be great, won't it? Well, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but you know, something to look forward yeah, to. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll have a cold that day. And, but you know, it's it's up to them. Yeah. They've got the beating of them. There's, there's no doubt about it. They're quicker in, in thought, quicker in speed. Yeah. Mm. Everything, everything about Liverpool. And they they, they haven't played. If Liverpool, if Liverpool well. played well yeah, enough. If Liverpool were to score another couple, it'd make changes. I mean, you look. Owen would come off, mm. saving the legs for Sunday. Mm. I mean, if they go on and play anything at all, they'll get more goals. But it's just, if you think about it, we were talking about before the game, it, it's actually just the game that they need. Because, mm. you know, yeah. they can stroll Stop through it, yeah. keep, well. keep yeah. a clean sheet, build up a little bit of confidence, one or two mm. players coming back in. Uh, Steven Gerrard, I thought, he's, you know, he's had a good first half as well. So, exactly what the doctor ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had to wait quite a while for anything. Uh, <laughs> about 20 minutes, but when it came, it was a, it was a, it was a nice goal. Yeah, well what move. I think it's sweet said as well and, and wins the ball. I mean, Gerard's closed in quickly. Switzer comes in, gets it. It's played to Gerard. Played in, good ball in. Bars does ever so well here. Good movement from one behind, but quick feet. Sports Michael Owen. And it was never in doubt once it was Owen's feet. I think, I think once, uh, I think what the key thing for me is, is the fact that Barras actually spotted the run of Owen. And once he actually gets the ball under control, Great, great thing about Gerard's pass. It, ma it makes Barros control it. Um, you know, great concentration. And Nobody obviously better felt... in this position. No. no. And he, I think also about Michael as well. He, he waited and waited. He knew it was coming, and he, he actually took the ball extremely well here. He's and then moved you, you well know what he's going to do as well. Yeah. You know, he's oh. got the space. But what they have done well is they've closed in quickly. You know, they've closed in. Yeah. The two midfield players have gone to the ball quickly. Made the mistake, the Vitesse defenders, and you, then you've gone for that one as well. Uh, Vitesse, 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 Vitesse. What, what is it? Oh, Barry said Vitesse. Barry oh, we'll knows go, everything. We'll, we'll go with Vitesse then. So we'll, right, we'll, right, right. we'll go with so Barry. It, so we'll, it's Vitesse then. <laughs> but they did everything right. They've closed in quickly. The ball into Barros was good. The control was good. The movement was good. And they've showed that if you can get that, the passing and movement yeah. right, then they'll make chances. Mm. A couple of chances fell to Danny Murphy. Um, one from a good move that involved um, Steven Gerrard at some stage. It's a, it's a passing again, Gary, you know, least number of touches on it as possible, get it out of your feet, keep the ball moving, it will always move quicker than the man, and, you know, a little give and go. And I think, you know, eventually when, when it goes out to, uh, I think it's to Michael again, and here, you know, how easy is this for him? It's like schoolboy stuff, just knock it past the fellow and run round him. Yeah, good uh, shot, though. Yeah, mm. very good, yeah, he looks shot, and then Murphy comes in the box, and... You're, you're talking about Gerard before, though. I mean, I mean, you don't see it here, but when he gives it and gets it back, he does it as quick as anybody. Yeah. You know, when he plays it, he plays it at eight and he gets it back yeah. quick. And it's difficult for the defenders to get run about it. If it's played in right, yeah. the pace he's playing it, he goes quickly, pings it in, and then moves and gets it back. Especially now he's got his fitness back. Well, he's, he's now super fit. Mm. But it's great to see him back yeah. playing well. It is. But having said that, again, you know, you've got to look at the opposition. The opposition there. Are not even closed in quickly, are not yeah. pressed, not showing anything I mean, at all no in any areas of the pitch. Can. 
I don't, Alan, I don't think they can. Yeah, but they're at home. Just, the just on the home team to have some sort of go, it's, some, think show it's, some sort of passion. I think it's the way they play. The the I think it's the way they play the football yeah. in, in that in that particular league. Mm. You know, you take the Dutch sides. Right the Dutch sides well, at yeah, home usually play, play and do nothing, have they? But even the crowd, the crowd. But it's pedestrian. I mean, it's it's pedestrian. Maybe it's the roof Dutch thing. football. Yeah. So I got the indoors. indoors we don't like playing indoors yet. <laughs> Maybe it's that. Right. Other Murphy <laughs> chance header. Yeah, yes, it's it's as well key. again. Yeah. It comes from a long throw in. It's headed back up. Watch the movement of Murphy. So it's a decent ball in. Does he think the goalkeeper's coming to close him down? Yeah. I, maybe, think, he, I think he do, I think he does, doesn't he? Which is why he just tries to get get the height early, and just got a bit too much on it. I think he'd be aware of, of the goalkeeper there. Unlucky. <clears throat> Wasn't lucky. Yeah. Wasn't lucky. Wasn't lucky. The timing of his run again, you know, mm. like Michael Owen for the goal, um, was certainly the key. Yeah. Ideal opportunity to get confidence oh. this match. Mm. The second half, you go and play. You've shown already that if you can play and pass and move, then you'll get mm. success. And when your confidence is low, if you can bang in a few goals, especially away from home. Mm. And it will set them up for the game definitely on Sunday. I suppose attitude is the key thing now, really, as much as anything else. And what man has personified that in the first half has been Stephen Gerrard. Their attitude has been good throughout. I think that they've been thoroughly professional and they've, they've gone about the game the right way. Yeah. Um, we're talking about confidence before the match and we keep on saying, you know, where does it come from, where does it go to? Well, the only way you can get it is by winning the match. And, yeah. and basically, if you can win the match by playing well, regardless of the opposition, mm. then you'll obviously be more confident. And this is why it's an ideal opportunity for them to go and play. And Steven Gerrard, you've mentioned, he's hustled, he's run, you know, he's made these surgeon runs, he's played it. The most important aspect for me is that when he's passed it, it's been Chris, so it's been with great authority, and most of the time it's been into feet. And you have he's one of those long-range efforts. Not, not his best, but... Got a bit of skill to get in the position. Corbin well, is a hit him with his left foot, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I think also, um, you know, the, the thing about him is that he probably feels at the moment that he's playing for his place in the, in the side. And when you consider, you know, sort of a month ago, that wasn't the case. Here, you know, you talk about confidence, a little flick inside, yeah. worth, worth a crack from that. Not, not a bad effort. Yeah, not a bad strike. Well, certainly on his weaker side, it's a good, it's a good hit for a for a right-footed player from sort of 30 yards. <laughs> a bit of pace in it. Yeah. Um, but nobody, nobody even comes and closes no, him no, down. There's nobody near There's him. no interest. Yeah. Well, Vitesse or Vitesse. Uh, whatever we want to call him. 43 minutes before they had a shot in goal in open play. And what happened? I think um, you're being kind. Mustafa, according to Trevor Buckingham, should shoot himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he didn't know whether to shoot himself. <laughs> That's what he, what he meant, yeah, rather than cross it. <laughs> <laughs> As the ball is played to the back post, and you see him winding the right, and he comes in late. I think he comes back. How many dummies was yeah, that, by the way? Two or three. I think it's the, this is it. This Stefanovic to the back post. Was it a shot? I don't know. Was what, it a I honestly cross? don't. I think, think Trevor's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what Mustafa was trying to do. If you, if you see here, what? I don't know. Was he trying to sort of half volley it, side foot it in, or was he trying to cross it? And, but that, if you think that's a sum total, well, yeah. especially that's a sum playing, total of Vitesse. Well, you've got to put pressure on the, some sort of pressure on the opposition. But it's, it's it. a strange non-performance by the home team, regardless of how Liverpool have played. I've got to put in the second off. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> now, now let's bring you some other UEFA Cup action. Fulham played Hertha Berlin in Germany on Tuesday, and they were watched by Tony Gubber. Hertha Berlin, the latest stop in Fulham's five-month European odyssey and a stadium that's a building site of preparation for the 2006 World Cup finals and which once hosted the 1936 Olympic Games. An early challenge on Steve Finnan didn't please manager Jean Tigana, but of much more concern was Berlin's opening goal after 25 minutes, headed in from a corner by the former Aston Villa player Stefan Beinlich. Tigana blamed Facundo Sava, who'd been posted to guard that near post. Fulham, unbeaten in 12 European ties, were level early in the second half. Good work by Malbranc, a powerful header by Detou, and Steve Marley poached a goal from the rebound off the post. And they came within a whisker of scoring twice in 60 seconds, when Detou again surged forward from midfield, only to be denied by an excellent save from the Hertha goalkeeper Gabor Kirali. 
Fulham's two-goal hero in Saturday's win over Liverpool had been Facundo Sava. But when he stuck out a boot to deflect Marcelino's free kick into his own net after 67 minutes, the Argentinian had more call for a paper bag than his trademark Zorro mask. And it might have been worse if goalkeeper Van der Zaar hadn't stuck out a foot to deny the Brazilian Marcelino. 1-0 at home in the second leg will see Fulham through. Now in action this evening is another British side. Having beaten Blackburn in the second round, Celtic were drawn against Spanish side Celta Vigo. The first leg is at Celtic Park. Here's what's happened so far with Sandy Clark and Rob McLean. Petrov to Larson, free kick against Berizzo. And an early set-piece chance for Celtic. It's taken quickly by Lennon to Valharan. Chris Sutton with a flick. Now Petrov, good strike, not far away. Lopez, halted by Larison, who then was caught in two minds with the pass. Agat and Sutton working on to Hartson. Through for Henrik Larson. Uh, he was offside. That was close, there wasn't too much in it. Good play from Chris Sutton, fighting his battle in the middle of the park there, playing it to John Hartson, tried to slip it through Larson, and for me he's onside. Assistant referee on the near side, certainly got that one wrong. Jose Ignacio to Juan Fran. Good reading of it from Didier Agat. That's up for Larson. And now linking up again with Agat. Looking for options in the middle, one was Larson, and how did that not go in from Steve Guppy? It's a great move from Celtic, good play, good build-up. Larson freeing a guy down the right-hand side, he knows he's got to hold on to the ball, take his time, a decent ball in, and Steve Guppy is so unfortunate there. Silvino, one fan played in three matches in the World Cup Finals for Spain, lovely turn, away from Agat. And Bobo Baldi with a miscue on his clearance, but the important thing was he got in the way of it. Rostovai has a long look at the penalty box, and cuts it back for Silvino, shot deflected. And that could have gone anywhere. Catania should have stuck that in the back of the net, for being honest. It's a late run from uh, Savino, it's a good ball across to Catania, that's a sitter. Steve Guppy, early ball, Pinto's there, didn't get much on it, what a miss from Didier Agat. A golden chance on 19 minutes to open the scoring, he blew it. It's a good ball from Guppy again, causing lots of problems to the defence and the goalkeeper. And Didier Agat, he's leaning back, got too much on the ball, wasn't really expecting it, and that's a chance. Mm, certainly was a great chance. Still about five minutes to go um, before half time there, incidentally. Um, B test, Arnhem not providing no. much opposition. No, they're not. And, but um, it's all about the second half. Liverpool can just see it they can, They can, you know, just go to another level. I think it's a great opportunity for, for Hooley to decide maybe 60, 65 minutes about Hornshaw. Hornshaw's come back maybe, I don't know, he's been out six, seven weeks. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to play him for the full 90? Yeah. You know, a big game coming up. You know, on, on Sunday morning? Or are you looking for just 100% fitness from him? For Gerard coming back, you know, played so well. Would you play him for the yeah. full match? So it gives you alternatives, it gives you an opportunity to rest certain players. But the most important aspect is to go and play well, pass it and move, and score a couple of goals. You dictate the tempo, win, yeah. the, win the game in the next 15 minutes, and you can make as many changes as you want. Yeah. Well, we're not making any changes. Trevor Brookin and Barry Davis. No changes on the pitch either at the start of the second half. And uh, Vitesse or Vitessa. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Most of the Dutch will say Vitessa, but it's a bit like Auxerre and Auxerre in France. Or Trevor Booking has a definitive line on it, though. Yeah, as well in East London, you can say West Ham or West Ham, depending on where you come from. Here's Zeman. First header of the second half for Anshou. 
wonder, in fact, whether uh, Gerard Houllier would like on show to play in 90 minutes. He hasn't he played 45 on uh, on Monday. Certainly will need to be at his best against Liverpool. The surprise of Owen finishes 90 minutes, though. Yes, I would have thought, uh, well, Mike Lowen certainly, I think, would come off early. And who would come back? Uh, I don't know if he's fit, Risa, Amman. Um, certainly, they'll, they'll be in, and Heskey perhaps in for the Man United game, that trio. This meets up. Gerard. Mustafa still down on the deck. Only if he'll get up now, the possession has been won by Klassens. The answer is no. Mara asks for the ball to be put out, and it is. And attention for uh, Mustafa. Rahmat Mustafa. Just got caught on the uh, instep, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like he got just trodden on, didn't it, by Traore? Uh, but again, he was waiting for it, I think. Uh, we saw Klaassen's uh, just break it on the other side and uh, it was Babalu tracked back. It's just they, they're just taking that yard or two extra longer thinking or, or playing the ball in and uh, the Premiership. That extra sharpness is there and uh, that's the difference certainly between the two sides uh, throughout the game so far. Yes, the gap is palpable and I suspect that they know it. They're just hoping to uh, make an impression but not expecting a victory. Possession conceded. Could be a Liverpool throw. Mustafa looks as though he won't be off for too long. Tenth uh, UEFA campaign for uh, Vitesse Arnhem. Finished in the top six every season. The, uh, since the early 90s. Only the second time they played an English side. The previous occasion was back in the September of 93 when they lost 3 0 at Carrow Road to Norwich City. Nil nil on the return. But they did once manage to put five goals past Dundee United. A couple of seasons earlier than that. Murphy can't quite believe that. I think a man's game is the uh, expression. Yeah, just the speed and a uh, little bit of body strength and Mustafa went over then and uh, I think they were lucky to get it. Lisa. Mustafa again sort his feet out as well as get the ball. Just we've seen a bit more from this man, Janssen. Came in as a teenager into the side, been a regular in the Dutch under-21 team. This is Klassens. That's pretty poor. From the 30-year-old. Yeah, the cross was from uh, quite long diagonally and it's almost impossible to get to any power or direction from there. You've got to try and get their team towards the byline, get the crosses in from those areas. But uh, at present, uh, it's Liverpool playing the diamond shape there. They've drawn people into that centre and it's so congested at both sides, not got a lot of width. Kick okay, to Liverpool. Termination there being shown by the uh, captain, Stefanovic, and the free kick clearly was the other way. Ciao. Murphy. Janssen was quicker than Murphy then. Oh. 
Just has a coach on his feet. Probably has demanded more from his team. I would hope that he has. A bit more show of the exuberance of youth. Whether or not the uh, technical abilities will go alongside him. Just wonder what, how sick or how bad the virus Peter's had. Uh, the fact he's on the bench, uh, you do feel that the need to risk him in some way or other to get that bit of experience and height and power up uh, ahead. And they need to do it probably before they can see the second goal. Come on. Got a room here for Frankel. Babble to him. And two going forward. The header over the top turned out to be quite a good back pass. From Traore. Presumably just trying to clear his own crossbar. It was a better ball from Frankel. Again, it was a, a longer diagonal one. Uh, I think it was Amoa and Mustafa all both going for the similar ball, but uh, Troyer covering well. And uh, in the end, as you said, it was a cushioned header back to Dudek, who he said we've got to keep an eye on to see how he responds to his confidence tonight. <laughs> but we've, we've not actually seen him tested at all. It would have been rather curious had uh, Kirkland uh, got his chance here because the man who lost his place to Dudek and has left the club, uh, Sander Westerveld, played here and uh, is very well regarded. Babel, Gerard. Baroche. Relative, but there's a little bit more being offered by Vitesse. Mustafa. That's a sliding roof. It was almost as though Mustafa thought there might be a tunnel available to him. Crowd at least making it a bit more tuneful. Impressed that it's gone Liverpool's way. At the moment, it's just a case of Liverpool trying to make sure that they uh, they don't get complacent, uh, get a yard or two slower, and uh, get caught in possession or something, pick up an injury or sloppiness, and concede a goal. Janssen. It took too long to make up his mind. He's got a very good left foot. Uh, he tries to use the ball well, he just looks if he's got a, a, a little bit uh, a lack of pace and uh, just now and again when he just dwells on it, Liverpool with that little bit of extra sharpness week in and week out can catch him out and catch him in possession. More extremist for a defender for Liverpool, that was on show. Feet. Just a bit over clever. Tough as well. Really, he shouldn't have been given the time to recover. Corner Lisa. Levchenko. Three to his left. Good challenge by Traore. But again, it was a speed of thought there. You know, you've got the wrong side of Liverpool, Levchenko. And he just paused, looked up. By the time you pause and look up, at this level against the Liverpool, Toro is making the tackle, and you, that is the, the difficult scene about three or four times in the space of the last three or four minutes. Ciao. Challenge by Stefanovic. Clever play by Janssen. Still got a lot to do. He has to go back to go forward. Banos a bit slow to get to his feet. Stafford again hoping the ball would run through and not actually seeing that Traore would intercept it. Now he's behind the fullback. Gerard prepared to put himself about again. Stafford. Yeah, he's rather easily brushed off the ball. 
Smith the Lees can't believe that. It was neat enough. Now look at this. Whoops. To be fair to Mr. Vase, the one player who has actually tried to go at defenders, he's, he has tried to, to open up a little more down this flank. But uh, let's see if Janssen can deliver a good cross this time. Would you like to give us an answer? Well, that is, well a good left foot I said he had, and that is the worst of the lot. In fact, he's had about four of those, and they've got progressively worse. I've got to say, and that comfortably was the worst. Really does suggest though, that not too much homework has been done on Liverpool's current form and the current form of the man clearing the ball now. But nobody's had a crack at him on any of these three things. Perhaps the current form is now rather better than the recent past form. Might find out on Sunday. Gonalisa. Lessons, but a drive from Frankel gets huge applause, but it did not trouble the Polish goalkeeper of Liverpool. Okay, and they worked it forward well. It's just that final ball, the, the final shot or delivery of the cross, it's just letting them down. I also do feel Liverpool just seem to be sitting back a little bit and they don't, they're not sort of making the runs from the back or midfield to, to support Barosh and Owen as they did in the first 45 minutes they're, they're sort of sitting there on their 1-0 one what one, tempted I must say to sooner rather than later perhaps to bring one or two substitutions on for Liverpool just to freshen up their performance I mean 1-0 is still a good scoreline but it looks as if they've almost settled for that something sir be remembered from the past when that used to be quite a good away score for Liverpool. Not always for full entertainment, it should be said. They say the two guys in the studio would be saying the job being well done. And I think tonight Liverpool will want to try and keep a clean sheet because that has been the problem in recent matches. And uh, with Ancho back, I mean, it's not as if they've been stretched too often, but uh, they will want to make sure they don't give anything away. Three goals against the last two away games, Basel and Fulham. Free kick was not that much better than Janssen's. Traore. Good ball. Murphy. And Owen is onside and he's got a lot of help up here. And was a touch greedy. Well, the man was the one who played about four Liverpool players. On side there, they all moved up for offside except the Slovakian, and uh, Mike Lowen should have done better squaring it or finishing himself. Big kick against Mustafa. This is the ball, it's, it's through. Look, all the arms go up, but uh, it's the man who played him on and. Uh, there was a couple of people looking at it square and it's the wrong decision if you don't score, if you take it yourself. Mark. Classens. She asked a bit too much, but he didn't pull out of the double challenge. Amar. Dudek. In the end, there had to be a good claim. Bamba put his foot in there, and the referee didn't like it, but didn't whistle it. There's a poor cross again from Amara out wide on the right. There's a bit of the... This is uh, offside. The flag's gone up. But, the, you know, the enthusiasm is there. The, the crowd are, are beginning to try and lift the, you know, the home team. But just as I say, that final delivery just letting them down. But, uh, again, Liverpool, I think, just sitting back a little bit. Truth be told, we uh, have had now an hour of the match. Two thirds of this first leg been uh, an armchair ride for oh, Gerard Ulyas. Med. Yevrich used his head. 
literally and metaphorically. Murphy. Poor ball. With two over on the far side. Very well taking it as a bit of a stroll, but uh, Julia won't want them to make these sort of mistakes on Sunday. Bamba! Well, there's a clear indication where, against the better side, you get punished. Uh, Hoopier making this initial slip, loses it here. You've got to say, then Umba does well. He, he does a very good step over because he one foots on Joe. He's got a very good shooting opportunity. He's made the half a yard and then just a little bit of exuberance and he panics and he cuts slices off the outside of his left foot. But against a better team, Barry, you, you would get punished. And Manchester United on Sunday would be a better team. Babbitt. Obviously, we'd like to keep the home fires burning in European competition, but it might be quite an interesting closing. 28 minutes or so if the Dutch were to score. Dutch team, not too many Dutchmen. They've got another chance here. Away from Mbamba. Mustafa. Glassens. Again, they're unlucky there. The crowd now really getting behind them. Frankel did very well. Left back, he got to the byline. Terrific cross now. Mustafa is just behind Mbamba, and if Mbamba doesn't touch that ball, it goes straight to Mustafa, and he had plenty of time to get the ball down. So it was a bit unlucky then, that deflection there to Klassens. Again, he couldn't quite get the finish on his left foot, but the crowd now certainly just sent in that the side could get an equaliser. I mean... Traore. Owen, good tackle by Zeman. Read that very well. Mamba. Confidence from Dudek. Barosh and Frankel. Frankel's tackle having nothing to do with the uh, Soccer, but the referee playing a good advantage again. Gerard. Jao. And lost uh, earlier when Barosh had it, knocked it to Steven Gerrard. He could have released it on the left, actually. Uh, they had two against one, Murphy and Owen, so that was a bit of a waste. Nicely done. Bamba. From Elisa, this is a good attack. Stretch was by Osho. And just listen to the reaction. Good piece of football. It was excellent. This is what Ancho, I think, does great. He anticipates these balls in and he cuts those out time and a time again with those lunges and little toe ends. So important. Zeman has come forward. Drop too short again. Not been very good at the set pieces. Janssen. And now it's a two man break. Barosh. And this is Owen. In on goal, chased by Cornelisa, and the goalkeeper did well and survives with fortune. Did all he could, Dragoslav Djevric, and he had the luck at the end of it. Cornelisa was chasing here, coming across the face of Owen, and the goalkeeper came to meet him, got a hand to it, and then Owen's second touch was a disappointment for him and a relief for Vitesse. Well, I think the home side probably have just earned that little bit of luck because they've had a good 10 minutes spell. They've got the crowd behind them. 
and uh, and that would have been harsh. Uh, good play by Barros, who released Mike Lone. He should have scored, uh, but uh, he you know, got the little rebound. Jevrick had done well, and, and it surprised us all, I think. The, his second touch knocked it past the goal. Amara. Bamba. Janssen. Frankel thinking about, do I go or do I stay? The answer is he stays. Now he could go. It's not used by Mbamba. Mustafa. Everything to the left of Mustafa. Petchenko not strong enough. The pass. In danger of being caught, Vitesks. So, because they're pushing so many people forward. That's well played by Stefanovic. Barosh and Owen were waiting. Jal. Barely broken sweat. Ah, Stefanovic caught. And here's Owen. That's another good stop by the Yugoslav goalkeeper. The goal is empty now, though. Well covered by Zeman in the end. And it's a goal kick. Oh, at least it's more entertaining. That was pretty good. Though. Well, Michael Owen could have had the match ball by now. Going Chevry out very, very quick. The second time he tries that little dink, the little lift over the goalkeeper, and the ball comes in and he's galloping back again. I think he, he deserved that bit of luck. Uh, He's certainly thwarted Michael Owen from a, a second and even perhaps a third goal. Give it to me early, says Mbamba. So that the ball goes to Smitsa. Barosh inside, Owen further over. Good challenge by Stefanovic. Cornelisa, a little bit of Arnhem to play in, and uh, Gerard Houllier is now at the edge of his area. Not too happy with what's going on. Oh, he's got his free kick. Hopefully having words with his assistant, and Bamba doing the same. It was interesting, the assistant who was two yards away didn't flag and the referee 30 yards away thought he'd been tripped, so Bamba complaining to the assistant. Now Jensen's lost his crossing from the free kick, not a surprise I suppose. Again, it's too short, this time not from Jensen. Ma. Played by Schmitzer. Janssen. This time he's given time. Lassens didn't give a good ball though, even with all that time. It was the proverbial first aid ball, wasn't it? Uh, fortunately, Lassens got it back now. Frankel not reading that from the Belgian. Attacking. Smitsa. Traore. The kick is uh, the home side's way. Some man to take it. Bell with uh, Vitesse has twice been out on loan since coming from uh, initially Slovan Bratislava and then uh, football in Turkey. Stefanovic. Next 
Shrugged off his man then, Mustafa. And it was Danny Murphy, and that's Glassens. And that was an opportunity. The substitution is going to be needed by Liverpool rather than uh, just being used for the purpose of Sunday. Well, our man Mustafa is plugging away down this side. He's done well. He's so uh, he used his strength a bit. Good cross. And to be honest, I mean, Klassen was the only one in the penalty here and he ran from a long way and he, he did get that header in, couldn't quite keep it low enough. But again, it's just enough to keep the home crowd just hoping that uh, perhaps they can conjure up an equaliser. Here he is again. Almost justifying being called Riga once more. The boots of Amoa. Levchenko, the Ukrainian. Stefanovic. Another by Herpia. Straight by Cornelisa. And here is Smitsa. Got it slightly under his feet. Another opportunity for killing the game stone dead is burned by Liverpool. Well, three one on ones. Uh, you've got to give goalkeeper Jebrich credit. He comes out very quick. As you say, he's got it under his feet, but it's because he's, he's so close. He stood up, and you know, it's, whether it's a leg, hand, or something, he's always got something there. And he's got close enough for them not to be able to lift it over him. Is by Dudek. And foul throw. As it should be said, become a little misty inside the uh, Helodome, but uh, not enough really to bother anybody. I think we're about to see Emil Heskey. Here he is, and he's going to replace Baros. Well, it's not one I would have predicted, to be honest. I thought uh, Baros has done okay, and uh, I thought, yep, yeah, this is the time you take Michael Owen off just to protect him, and he probably stays on and uh, Emil Heskey will join him. Um, Emil Heskey might actually be quite grateful of uh, a few moments playing up front rather than on the left, might he? Well, I would have thought that would be the, the pairing against Manchester United, uh, Heskey offside there, but uh, yeah, certainly he uh, doesn't look as effective out wide on the left, but uh, I must say I'd have thought uh, he did just come on for Michael Owen, but uh, Michael Owen probably a bit frustrated, he could have had a hat-trick, he's missed two one-on-ones with the goalkeeper, perhaps he, he wants to keep plugging away for another goal. Babel. Stefanovic and Smitsa. Levchenko. Konolisa. That time Mustafa had it again and he's got it. Bamba making the forward run, trying to get between the two central defenders. Mustafa. Almost with his toe then, he got that back. Bamba. Frankel. Four waiting for a cross. A bit of a crime if it doesn't get there. And it doesn't. Janssen. Cornelisa. I mean, they kept possession, but Liverpool worked really hard there and did well closing them down and uh, just nullified Frankel out on the left there, being able to get the cross in. Let's see if they can get one from the right. Cornelisa, he's going to have to hurry up about it. Got a corner. 
Uh, Janssen has been restored to set-piece duties. He's jogging over with that left foot of his. Uh, now he's offering it up. See if anyone else wanted it. Can they clear the near post? That first man. Into the last quarter of an hour. Dudek hasn't been beaten. Yevrich has been beaten once. That's a better ball. Met by Heskey. Mustafa. Uh, it was a brief dream of glory. And then he just pushed it in and no more. Now, I'm not going to say who's thinking about shooting himself there. Didn't. Otherwise, the lads would pounce. His performance in the second half has justified the reprieve that he was given. Murphy. Smitsa. Owens chasing. Here comes the goalkeeper again. And this might be quite a good pass. Oh, what about that, Mr. Referee? Nothing is the answer. They don't like the decision, although it was probably the right one, but they got themselves in a bit of a mess, and the initial push, in fact, was by... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the worst efforts at getting a penalty I've seen for a long time. And Bam Brennan even had the cheek to moan to the referee not getting it here, I did. <laughs> oh, it's in life at the entertainment. They have entertainment of different sorts here because this pitch, as I said at the start, can be rolled away into the car park, and they've had Bruce Springsteen and a few other notables performing here. Now, a couple of substitutions. To be made by Vitessa. And they're bringing on a young 18-year-old for his first chance. And also Calasson, the 18-year-old is uh, Roger. And he's getting uh, good applause, the newcomer. And Bamba's effort at the penalty was his last effort, and uh, Roger coming through, so it does suggest that uh, Peters then is, with his virus and sickness, is, uh, is not feeling too good. Otherwise, this would have been the time you'd have thought you'd have brought his experience on, but he probably doesn't feel as well enough to come on. Franklin is the other player to go off, and Mustafa has gone to the left side. With uh, Calasson on the right. The moment they've got a front four. Here's Mustafa. First touch for the youngster. Yeah, put Klassens, haven't they, uh, back to left back, and there he is chasing back now. The game for broke, it's good to see. Owen and Heskey in the middle. Pointing ball in from Smitsa. Aren't you having to hurry a little bit? Yeah, Roger just uh, looks like a, a very quick, elusive centre forward that's certainly not got any height or power, so he's got to try and use his trickery or pace to upset Upa or Oroncho. Murphy. Oh, it's gone off to the right. Gerard through the middle. Good challenge by Zeman. Roger was uh, 18 in March. Never previously been, not only not in the team, but never on the bench. Interesting choice. Slightly fortunate getting the clearance. Mustafa over on the left-hand side now, um, just trying to hook it clear. I mean, he 
And on the right, he used all the time, really, his right foot. So I'm not too confident that he's going to be uh, that troublesome down that left flank against Babel. Anyway, we'll see Sony, though, has come on and playing right side of midfield, the other substitute. Two up to help. Can't find the ball through to Levchenko. Isa, Levchenko coming back to help. Different test, no, just about the same test for a moment. A priori. has got four in the box. Better cross, but they miss it up between them. Mustafa hits the post! Oh, no! Oh, an unbelievable miss by Kalasson. Well, Son just saw, oh, what, a minute or so earlier, tried a bit of trickery in the box and fell over without touching the ball. And then, unfortunately, as Mustafa, with his right foot, wraps it against the post. And you think, well, it's just a, a knock-in return. And the, the poor newcomer misses the goal, I mean, he's had a torrid 90 seconds there. One touch of the ball wide of an open goal and then Mustafa looking across, can't believe it. He's done well this second half and uh, probably deserved to score with himself. Coming in from that left-hand side with his right foot, it turned out well for him. Well, it's, it's certainly more entertaining and at times quite a lot of fun, but I'm not sure this is doing much good for the confidence of Liverpool going into the match against Manchester United. Well, it's... They're up against a side that got a handful of experienced players and then a, a lot of raw, enthusiastic youngsters who are, are chasing around uh, and, and actually, most of them in particular, have caused Liverpool problems. But at the other end, also, Liverpool have had, what, three one-on-ones and, and really should have put the game beyond any doubt, but they haven't. And that's why it's made it so in, much more enjoyable in this second period. Uh, one of the uh, newspapers here resorted to the... Uh... <laughs> The old cliche of cup ties of David and Goliath, but at the moment, David has shown much more in the uh, second half. And I mean, Liverpool absolutely outclassed them in the first half, should have been out of sight, then they're not. And now there's some doubt about whether they're actually going to come away with the victory. They're going to win the tie at Anfield, but they might well not come away with the victory here, the way it's going. Sorry, puts it out for the corner. He's done quite well with little Roger, 33, is, is quick, his close control is, is good, he got to the byline and uh, all right, wasn't the best of crosses with his left foot, bit too near the goal, but Traore didn't know who was behind him, so is that to concede this goal, and now can they get another better cross in from Janssen? Different one, Mustafa, he's got to be quick! He was quick enough, but not accurate enough. He did well, actually, he got the space, uh, dropped the shoulder and uh, made the shooting opportunities. They've done the hard stuff and then just didn't get it on target. Stefanovic. Eski. Playing two games at the same time. Free kick. Into the last five minutes of the match. And on comes the stretcher, which is the usual thing. But... Smitsa, who fell awkwardly. His man, Jow, he's clattered at about three of his own players during the 90 minutes, but he, he is strong, he's, he's done well again in that anchors man job. Schmitz, who, who came on uh, after Sheru got that early injury, again had one of his frustrating nights, really. He's, uh, thought he did very well in the second half against Basel, but again this evening uh, not being able to make the impact. 
very different match, obviously, from the last time Liverpool played in the UEFA Cup in the final in Dortmund 18 months ago, but there have increasingly, as in that match, been moments of total disbelief of things that haven't been done well. Well, it's a good win. It looks like it's going to be a, a clean sheet, but there have been concerns. I think they've sat back and got a bit complacent in the second half, and... Uh, you know, the little areas that they just can't afford against Manchester United on Sunday in the matches they've got coming up. There's Gerard. Power the buff. Opia. Just away from Smitsa. Just got the touch from Levchenko. Four balls from Cornelisa. Murphy, Owen, he's going to play five consecutive games. Amoa, Jansen, Callison, no nonsense from Herpia. Stefanovic. crowd in pretty happy frame of mind enjoyed the second half from their team Stefanovic Jansen jogging back he's a been deep in midfield for most of it, just saw perhaps he could get a little bit of glory, get an equaliser, but it wasn't to be. Haven't got long if they are to get one. Offside, the crowd want the flag, but Owen was not in the very good play. Line of four in attack for Vitesse. Jenko Murphy held off. And he finds Mustafa. I want to see the ball with Mustafa. Escape waiting where Cornelisa didn't. Rolls reversed here between the two teams. Amoa. Two touches from Levchenko, the Ukrainian, neither of them were good. Jao thinks about a crack, did get hold of it. Gone for the return. Calasone fought across it too. Traore concedes the corner. Well, this has got to be one of the uh, last chances. Everyone is coming up. Nobody wants to take it at the moment. Ganton seems to have given it up and. Uh, a newcomer coming over to take it then it looks like a mullet number six Could be a fruitful corner or not way to the back of the box and quite an easy catch a very easy catch in fact for Dudek from Stefanovic See how much time is going to be uh, allowed, and it's three minutes. Well, he's kept a clean sheet. Uh, as you do, don't be delighted with that, but uh, it's not a lot that you can remember as having to make saves to give him that confidence back. So, you know, it's it's been done in a, a fairly uh, strange way this evening. match 
really has been uh, an interlude between the Champions League and the Premiership, which in the first half seemed to be just what the doctor ordered as far as Liverpool were concerned to get some confidence back, and in the second half has been really very strange, quite often entertaining and often for the wrong reasons. Montreux will have benefited from the 90 minutes. Murphy, Owen, Phil Thompson waving his team backwards, Murphy, Side flag. Noah Janssen. Mustafa. Lassens. Good play by the goalkeeper. It's a goal kick, the last touch was the Belgians, and he's very disappointed. Well, Mustafa, good to see him with the final ball, really, because uh, he's certainly been their most influential player, and it's just behind Klassens, and his first touch wasn't the best. And it's a shame, there's a lot of space there. Again, a little worry for Liverpool that they allowed in that space in the last minute. Could have been punished. I don't think the second half has been good for Liverpool's confidence at all. Maybe, maybe I ought to walk off and say we've got the victory, we'll win the tie comfortably. But they have uh, been made to work rather more than they should have been. They've missed chances at one end and they've made mistakes at the other. And they've allowed a team that they were outclassing in the first half to come back and provide the entertainment. Comment, Mr Brooking? Well, they've allowed Stavanovic just to give uh, Mike Lowen a whack in the head. And, uh, in the last minute, which he could have done without, I'm sure. He's jogged through the night, could have had a, a hat-trick. But I certainly uh, agree with you. Uh, you know, Vitesse have a, certainly done better in the second half. Mustafa has done well, and they've had chances, and Liverpool haven't punished them. Uh, they should have scored more than the one goal. Uh, but I suppose clean sheet, Gerard, Ancho, even Babel have come through relatively unscathed. Yeah, maybe that sums it up. Relatively unscathed, a victory for Liverpool by one goal to nil, but uh, I think Jimmy Greaves got it right. It's a funny old game, Gary. It was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there was, it was a bizarre match. Barry's right in, in, in many ways. It was a very peculiar game. I thought it was a very dull first half. I think basically in the second half it opened up a bit. We, need, we stress the importance of Liverpool, if they got the chances in the second half, then they could, if they took them, they could th cruise through the last 20-30 minutes. Unfortunately, they had four great chances, uh, Owen should have squared the first one, then he's cleaned through against the goalkeeper, you expect him to score, and then Smitzer was cleaned through, the goalkeeper made a good save. Then it got a bit scrappy, Vitesse came back in the match, and conceivably they could have got a goal near the end, and they caused Liverpool one or two problems, but... You'd have to say the standard opposition that Liverpool were playing tonight was poor. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would accept the result before the game, but quite honestly, the, the tie should have been absolutely put out a doubt tonight. Um, I think Liverpool should have won three or four nil, to be quite honest with you. And all right, towards the end, obviously Vitesse had one or two chances, but I mean, you know, the three one-on-ones that Liverpool mm -hmm. had alone, generally, it, it would have been game over completely. So, I mean, they'll, they'll be pleased about the, you know, kept a clean sheet, created a few chances, but uh, um, slightly less than yeah. convi convincing against very, very mediocre opposition. But you've seen it so many times if it, when it gets a bit easy and you think... It almost got dragged down. Yeah, yeah you get end. dragged into their level and before you know it, you're struggling and then the trying passes things, go astray yeah. and you're trying yeah. something clever and just to, instead of just getting it and playing, they're then trying to be too elaborate in the final yeah. third of the pitch. Of, 
or getting in the middle of the park and trying crazy passes, mm -hmm. Hollywood passes, and then they come come on to you and you're under a bit of pressure. And to be fair, the Liverpool didn't handle the pressure that well. Yeah. You know, a number of times the balls came into the box, I'm not saying they were panicking, but they were sort of sixes and sevens and uh, Vitesse had a great chance late on and as mm. I say it could end the draw but Liverpool should have won easy well, they, they didn't you know the, the yeah. chances they created Liverpool oh. was just, but they were so simple mm. they didn't have to even really play no. good football well, well let's let's remind ourselves of the chance that they did put away the first half fell to uh, Michael Owen he missed one or two but he made no mistake with this one yeah I think Liverpool do well here to press the ball Gerard's the first one to go comes inside Smith said is the next one close it down quickly but it comes to Gerard, great ball in to Barras, a lot of pace in it. Good first touch, good feet, own little bit of movement. Good vision from Barros and you know from eight yards out he only missed from there. I think the oh, thing is as well, I mean Sweetson <coughs> as well isn't he winning the tackle, but um, you know, once Owen knocks it off there, Gary, he's into the box. But the great thing about him is he's not quite sure what Barros is gonna do and he he has to sort of stop his run at one time. Eventually, and then the way he just he, the way he took the pass from Barros, and mm. well, it's comfortable for him. He, he just passed it into the net. Mm. It's and it, was pro it was probably more difficult than the other chances yeah. he had later on. Mm. Speaking of which, I think Speaking we can see which, well, the first one now, where you say he should have squared it as a striker. Yeah, and you always score. Score. That's always your point it. of view. But if you he's look got here, a score man. Yeah, but he's at got, he's at got least, a, at least when he gets through here. I'll say this for him, he has a little look up to see who's there, <laughs> yeah, and, and then he decides he ain't going to pass it. <laughs> it's okay, so I'm not going to pass it regardless. He just, he, Murphy on the ball, defence all over the place. He just had that little look across there. What's he going to uh, give it to? Oh, he's got well, three he's choices. He's got three, he can... Smeetzer, Murphy, Barros, you name it. This is the one here, this is the angle here. You have a look at his head. Yeah. Just a little, yeah, has he got your look? Oh, he's looking all right, and then he's thinking, nah, nah, nah. nah. Actually, the goalkeeper does all right. It's a tight angle to score from. Yeah, but let's let go his square. I he's always think in that. I know what you're going to say. Well, if he passes it, give someone else a chance to miss. That's what you're going to say. No. You're the, presen hey, you're the presenter. We ain't interested in what no, you think. Yeah. He should have well, squared it. I'm going to say two, it. Anyway. Two to one. He should have squared it. I just want to say, right, you're doubling your chances of missing it if you pass. Because first well, you've got to get the pass so right, and then he's got to get the shot in. But you've got to think how it's easier to score. How if it's that, easier listen, to score to square it, uh, exactly. then surely you've got to square it. How, it's not because you've got to get two things right no, if no, you no, square you it. You've got to get the pass don't. right and the finish right, as you opposed to just the finish right. You make the chance right. easier, much easier. It's an easy square. He's got a choice of two. But I'll tell right. you what, if you've got a one-on-one -on -one with a goalie, you should score anyway. And he got a couple after that, didn't he? Changing the subject. Yeah, this is the, these are the easier chances because he's come from a different angle. And at this stage... I mean, again, Vitesse are all over the place. I mean, where is the defence? There's no defence. <laughs> you know, and so he's yeah. cleaning in goals here, but you watch how quickly the keeper comes to him. He's out coming out quick, he just needs to go the right-hand side, and it's, it's... And then, of course, when it comes back off the keeper, you expect him to bury it. Do you want to know what I think? No. No. Right. They set on the set here again. Except, you know, he's heading in that direction. And actually, what he tried to do was far more difficult than just going round him and, and, and rolling it in. I was only going to agree with you. Oh, Ross, good to change. It wasn't even a great deal of conviction in that one either. A little dink over here. And then Smith, again, good play, decent movement. Bottom of the picture, he's in. Keep it as well, yeah, I think, yeah. now. He stands up for a long time, hits it with his leg. He should have gone round him as well, dragged it to the left. He should, he should have squared that. Yeah. In, in, there wasn't anybody there, but he still should have squared that. Yeah. In fairness to Michael Owen, though, it's, it's very rare he makes a wrong decision <laughs> in, the, in those situations. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best chance of the game <laughs> <laughs> fell to the other end, didn't it? <laughs> fell to, fell the, to the other end, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or even the other team. Like the... <laughs> I've gone. I'll be, be tight then. <laughs> oh, this is a great chance. I mean, it comes in here, it's supposed to be. Mustafa, wasn't like it? it? Is it Sony, is it? Sony, yeah. yeah. Fantastic opportunity. I mean, it's a great chance for uh, Mustafa yeah. anyway, wasn't it, first thing? He just sort of snatches at it. he just come on. Yeah. You can say I mean, he just came on. You think he should have squared that? Should have scored. Yeah. Should have squared it into the back of the net. Totally agree. <laughs> right, Celtic and Celta Vigo are still playing at Celtic Park. Let's see how they're going with Sandy Clark and Rob McLean. Jose Ignacio. 
to Juan Fran. Good reading of it from Didier Agat. That's out for Larson. Now linking up again with Agat, looking for options in the middle. One was Larson. And how did that not go in from Steve Guppy? It's a great move from Selby. Good play, good build up. Larson freeing Agat down the right hand side. He knows he's got to hold on to the ball. Take his time, a decent ball in. And Steve Guppy is so unfortunate there. Silvino, Juan Fran. Played in three matches in the World Cup finals for Spain. Lovely turn away from Agat. And Bobo Baldi with a miscue on his clearance. But the important thing was he got in the way of it. Mostavai has a long look at the penalty box and cuts it back for Silvino. Shot deflected. And that could have gone anywhere. Catania should have stuck that in the back of the net, if I'm being honest. It's a late run from uh, Savino, it's a good ball across, and Catania, that's a sitter. Steve Guppy, early ball, Pinto's there, didn't get much on it, and what a miss from Didier Agat. A golden chance on 19 minutes to open the scoring, he blew it. It's a good ball from Guppy again, causing lots of problems to the defence and the goalkeeper. And Didier Agat is leaning back, Bit too much on the ball, wasn't really expecting it, and that's a chance. One fan to Mostovoy. Lucin, Lopez, Peter Lucin, here's an opportunity. And Rob Douglas did just enough. It's good play from the Spaniards, big rabbit there, had to go on his toes, but it's a good build up, good passing movement. Lucin and Lopez playing the little one two. Big Radder enough certainly to put him off. Clever movement from Neil Lennon. Henrik Larson with a lovely turn away from Sergio, and that's going to be a yellow, and is. No question, no complaints. Good play from Celtic, quick throw in. Neil Lennon involved, played the ball into Henrik Larson. He's gone beyond them, and Sergio's taken Henrik out the game. But again, happened the first half, he got away with it. No question, no doubt this time, yellow card for Sergio. Jostling for position in the penalty area. Baldi and Hartson and Sutton and Larson. In from Guppy. Chris Sutton there, ricochets. And it's a corner kick, it's deflected wide from Sutton. Celtic have the pressure on. Chris Sutton's unlucky here. Wins the first head and the ball breaks to him. And Sam Juan there just managed to... Block it, deflect it, away from the corner kick. In from Steve Guppy, John Hartson there. Celtic have scored, it's Henrik Larsson. Celtic start the second half in style. Larsson breaks the deadlock, his 25th goal of the season. It's a great goal from Celtic's point of view. Set piece again, corner kick, Hartson causing problems in there. Goalkeeper lost all at sea. And that man Larson, so good in the air, reacts first. Gets in between the two defenders here. He's always going to get there first. And invariably put the ball in the back of the net again. And here's what Martin O'Neill thought. It's a useful flick on from Mostovoy. Here's Lopez, stepped over it. Uh, no one was there for Celta Vigo. That was a chance. It was a chance, and uh, Steve Guppy for me managed to do exceptionally well. The ball's coming across here. Lopez looked as if he was going to get there first. He was in there. Guppy, but did enough to put him under pressure. And eventually Petrov working back the way, cleared the danger. Larson. To Larson. John Hartson. Chris Sutton. And John Hartson again, looking for a penalty. The referee not interested. It could have been, it's good play from Celtic. Sutton and Hartson laying it up there. I think he got the ball, to be honest, that time. Baldi, up to Hartson. Henrik Larson with a chance, blocked by Pinto. Decent opportunity for goal number two for Larson. 
he should have squared it. Um, Leeds also playing tonight. It's um, currently 0-0. They're approaching half-time in that one. There's still a few minutes to go in that game for Celtic to get another goal. And there's another big match for Celtic a week on Saturday with the Old Firm game, a match you can see live on BBC One at 12.10. Right, let's hear from Michael Owen. He's with Garth Crooks. Michael, a nasty bump on the head at the end there. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling OK. It's a uh, good job. It was only in the last uh, few seconds. I think there was a couple there today. Sammy Ippie got one in the first half and I got a bit of a crack in the second half, but it seems all right. How would you assess Liverpool's performance tonight? Um, well, we thought we limited them to, to only a couple of chances. Um, we had a few chances ourselves. Me and Vladdy missed uh, a couple in the second half. So um, their keeper played well, made a few saves, but more than happy with a 1-0 victory away from home. When you get the victory but miss as many chances as Liverpool did tonight, does it make a difference? Does it matter? Well, yeah, you'd prefer to, to win by a more comfortable margin, but I think if you'd given us 1-0 um, in the first leg, you know, we would have um, bitten your hand off. So you know, we're very pleased with that result. It's definitely been... He'd have bitten Gar's hand off for that result. <laughs> <laughs> Not with a microphone in it, I presume. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's a good result yeah. and get its job done, really, although slightly unsatisfactory with not scoring more goals. No, I mean, as Mark said, they were taking one over before the start of the match, but when, when you go on the pitch and you have a look at the opposition, you size them up and the way that Liverpool played in the first half, uh, and then you go and you know that if you get two or three, then, yeah. the, then you can make changes and, and just basically stroll it. And the disappointment for them was that they didn't uh, finish off the chances they created mm -hmm. early in the second half and then it all got a bit scrappy, a bit sloppy yeah. and they came under pressure and to be honest they didn't deal with it yeah. that great. Now Mark, one I, of the pluses yeah. uh, I think for Liverpool, the performance of Steven Gerrard. Yeah, well we, sp we spoke uh, long and hard about him at, at the start of the programme and uh, well chronicled that uh, he had his public rebuke from Gerrard here sort of ten days ago and you can see he's, he's back in so far as they say his fitness is better, he's, he's always determined anyway Steven Gerrard, fearless in the tackle his range of passing is excellent and, you know, gives a ball in to get it back. It was always going to be that way. And his, his vision on the ball's the best that Liverpool have. There's no, there's no doubt about it. And you, you, know, you can't just say after one game that he's back, but it, it looks good for him at the moment. And, you know, he said he's got to be in the team. You know, Liverpool's first 11, he's in the team. And when he's playing well, everybody knows he's an outstanding player. Yeah, I mean, he loses it here and he runs 20 yards tremendous conviction to win the tackle. I mean, again, when you analyse his performance, you've got to remember that he ain't playing against a lot. If you go back to last year in the Champions League when Liverpool played Roma at Anfield, he gave one of the best midfield performances I've ever seen. <coughs> so, I mean, he's not reached that level tonight, but the fact yeah. that he's got the engine, the fact he's getting there, the fact he's getting possession, he's finding red jerseys. Yeah. I mean, all goes well for Liverpool because it is right that he can be the best player. He can be yeah. anything he wants to be. He just yeah. has had a bit of a blip and he's got to come back. And it's, and it's how players react from that blip. It, it, Liverpool have been in, in a good run of form going into tonight's game, they'd have won 4 0 there. Easy. Easy. Absolutely right. easily. Okay, but they're still going to win the tie. Well, we'll I see. bet you're looking forward to the turn there. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Oh, so killed. Hansen has just ruined my evening by saying he should have squared it and now he's taken my closing line. Good night. <laughs>